yeah so we'll talk about like how to import a csv or excel file inside our machine so for example if you have a csv or excel file in which there are six to seven columns and there are some kind of data inside it and you directly want that data to dump in sql server so that you can use it in a form of table then i will tell you the process how you can actually do it so let me share my screen in the bigger picture so that you can understand that. So, okay. So now first thing that you will do it, like, for example, if you want to like import Excel or CSV file, first thing that you have to do is you have to create a proper database in which you will import your CSV file in the form of table. And if you already have a database in which you want to pull it, you can also use that database. But in this class, I will tell you the process from scratch. So I will create a database. I will write create database and I will give the name of my database as e-commerce. Like I will give it a name as e-com database. And I will run it. Now you know the second process like if I have used ecom database, I will try to use it. Use ecom database. And I'm using it now. Now command completed successfully. Now all the things that we are doing in the query writing part, that will be part of my e-commerce database only. Now you will click here on refresh button. And I will check where is my ecom database here. So let's again write it here and refresh it. So now you will be able to see your ecom database. So this is my ecom database here. Now in this ecom database, I want to pull my CSV or Excel file. So I will right click on it. After right clicking on it, I will click on task. And after clicking on task, I will click on import flat file. So first you have to click on your database, right click, then you have to click on task and then you will click on import flat file. After clicking on import flat file, you will see our interface like this. Now in this interface, what you have to do is you have to click on, you have to click on next. After clicking on next, you have to search for your CSV or Excel file. So I will try to search for a file. So I have my file in this one. So these are my CSV or Excel files that I have with me. So I will try to pull my customer's file. So I will double click on it. Now, as you have uploaded your customer's file here, you have to give a table name. So by default, it will take the table name as the CSV file name. But if you want to give your own table name, you can give it. So I will take the by default name, which is customers. Then I will again click on next. Now, after clicking on next, it will show me like how my, how my file will look like or how, how my table will look like after importing this data. So you can have a picture like you, have, you can have a look here. After that, you have to click on next again. Now, this is the complete tabular picture. Like what is the data type? What are the primary keys? What are the nulls and everything? So first of all, see, you can see that for each and every column, they have given a by default data type. So this data type that you are seeing here are interpreted by the SQL server because you have only pulled your CSV or Excel file. But the data types that are given to them are pulled by SQL server. So it's their default data type that they want to give, but you can change it as well. If you want to change it to any other data type, you can do that. After that, if you want to assign a primary key, if you want to assign a primary key to a column, you can do that. So I will assign primary key to my customer ID column. It's not mandatory. If you want to do it, you can do it. After that, there is null option. So if you are importing any CSV file, if you will not click 
here then for a single row if there will be a single null value that row will not get accounted to your table so every time when you are inputting your csv file or excel file in sql server click on this allow null now you will get the exact file that is there like you will get the exact file that is there now you have to click on next again now you again have to click on finish now your operation is completed now your csv file is loaded inside your database with the name customers now you have to click on finish and now i will try to fetch my csv file that i have imported in a form of table so let's do this thing So tell me if I want to see each and everything from my table, or if I want to check each and everything from my table, like all the records, how can we do that? We just have to write select star from, and I have created my file with the name as customers. So now I will write customers here and I will run it. See the CSV or Excel file that you have loaded. Now it's in a form of table in your database. So you can load as many CSV files or as many Excel files in a single database. Is it clear to everyone? Is it clear to everyone? So now we will go, we'll start with writing queries and all. So what we will do is we will try to start from the first query. So you know that if you want to get each and every data, or if you want to get all the data from this CSV file picture or Excel file picture, you can do it like this. And if you want this data that like, for example, if someone asks you like, tell me that what are the things inside the table or give me all the data that is inside the table, you will just write select a star from customers. Now the second step will be the second step will be if a person wants dedicated columns. Like he don't want everything. He only want first name, last name and phone number. If you only want three things from the table. Now what you will do is you will write select. Then you will write first name, column name, first name, comma, last name, comma, phone number from from which thing from my table which is customers and let's run it so now you are seeing only three columns that you want to like get and that you want in your output so this is the second thing if you want some kind of dedicated columns now the third thing that will come into the picture is where clause where clause so what actually a where clause is so where cloud clause is used for filtering your data filtering your data and it's very important like in 90% of the queries or 95% of the queries, you will use where clause. So now what is where clause? For example, I have my table select a star from customers. I have my table. And in this table, my question is, I want all the records. records where my country is 
where my country is United States. I want all the records where my country is United States. So now what's the condition here? Tell me, what is the condition here? Okay, so the condition is you only want the details of the customers where the country is United States. So I will write select star, like select everything from my customers table. Now, after this, I have to drop my condition and I will drop my condition with the help of where clause. So where country is equal to now United States is a string. United States is the alphabetical character kind of thing or a string kind of thing. So you know that if you want to drop any condition or if you'd want to drop any value from the where care or care format, you have to put it inside the inverted commas. So I will write United States and I will run this. Now, I'm getting the records of the people where the country is United States only. See, all these records are from United States. No other countries there. No other country. So this is my where thing. Now, in where clause only, there is something known as and clause, comma, or. And, comma, or. What is and and what is or? Suppose, suppose in this table, in this customer's table, let's again run it. So if you have a condition, if you have a condition, like if you have a condition, so there are two ways to identify when you will use and, and when you will use or. The first thing is, if you want to drop if you want to drop two conditions or more than two, more than two in a single column, if you want to drop two conditions or more than two conditions in a single column, then you will use or clause. And if you want to drop if you want to drop two or more than two conditions in conditions from different columns, different columns, then you have to use and. This is the basic thing that you need to understand with the help of and and or. Now, my question is, I want all the records from the table customers where my city is New York, comma, Chicago, comma, Dublin. Dublin or anything. So this is my question. Now tell me whether I will use AND clause or OR clause. Akansha, just tell me and Divya, Divya and Akansha, just tell me what I have told you previously. Just read these two conditions again and tell me which clause I will use. Read these two conditions and tell me which clause I will use. These three conditions, New York, Chicago, and Dublin are from a single column. Multiple conditions, two or more than two conditions from a single column, which means we have to use or. So we will write select star from customers 
where city is equal to New York or city is equal to Chicago or city is equal to Dublin. So this is my answer for this question. Now, if I want city as New York, Chicago, Dublin. So I will change the condition a little bit. So now, now I want city. I want city as New York and country as Australia. Now this is my question. I want all the records where the city is New York and country is Australia. Which clause I will use? And clause. Because two conditions or two or more than two conditions from different columns. So I will write select star from customers where city is equal to New York and country is equal to Australia. So tell me if I will run this query, see the table. If I will run this query, I will get any output yes or no. Okay, let's run this. I am getting no output. I am getting no output. Why I am getting no output? Because New York City is from United States. So, if you will run this query, only if the city is New York and for the same row, if the country is Australia, only you will get that row because you have to get both these conditions on the same plate. Like for a single row, if city is New York and country is Australia, only then you will get the output. Is it clear? Why you are not getting any output? Now, for example, if I put something like this or So when I have put or here, see what I am getting. See, I have written city is equal to New York or country is equal to Australia. This is our wrong output. Why? If you have used or, then this is a wrong output. Why it's a wrong output? Because you are only focused about city New York. But when you have put or here, you are getting city as this also. Brisbane also, Melbourne also. You are getting all these other cities as well. So on a correct pace, if you want to drop two conditions based on different columns, you will hear use and only. So this is the correct query. Clear? Clear to everyone like when we will use and and when we will use or? Now, after and and or, we will talk about two other things which are known as in comma not in. What is in comma not in? What is in and what is not in? Just understand. For example, I will write select star from customers and I will run it. I will run it. Now, my question is I want I want all the records and what is the record? Record is this thing. So this single thing is a record. So I want all the records where my city is New York 
और शिकागो और डब्लिन और टेक्सास नो टेक्सास ऑस्टिन और ब्रुसेल्स और ब्रिस्बेन नो टेल मी इफ आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस हाउ मेनी और कंडीशन यू विल यूज हेयर हाउ मेनी और कंडीशन यू विल यूज हेयर इफ आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस फाइव और कंडीशन नो सिक्स और कंडीशन you will use six or conditions because or there sorry five or conditions and one is that thing only like any country is in so you will use this much thing but you don't have to write a query like this because it will become so lengthy you again have to write city is equal to new york or city is equal to chicago or city is equal to dublin instead of this what you can do is you can use in clause so in clause is like a or clause only in clause is like or clause only but you can use in clause like this select star from customers where country or sorry where city in and now you will drop all the city names that you are interested in Chicago, comma, New York, comma, Austin, comma, Brussels, like as many as conditions that you want. so what in will do is in will if you are dropping in here in will check all these conditions with the help of or clause for city but you don't have to write again and again or clause so in is something like this so in behaves same like or clause but it will save your like you don't have to write a lengthy query you can go here you can write city in and then you will write all the cities that you want to filter so this is my query so now you don't have to write like or like this you can directly write city in and you can pass all the city names that you are interested in is it clear to all of you now if someone has asked you like i want all the city data all the city's data data wherever wherever the city is not in this like now the question is the person who is interested for data wants all the data but he don't he don't want data for city chicago new york austin and brussels so if this is the condition like he want all the cities but he don't want these four then how many or conditions you have to write depending on the number of cities excluding this so there can be 20 cities 30 cities in excluding this so you have to write that much or conditions but not in clause will solve your problem you will write select star from customers where city not in and you will pass this thing so if you will pass this thing city not in this these cities it will give you the data for all the cities who are excluding this so that is something known as not in so not in use not in is used for excluding excluding the things and in is used for including the things is it clear to everyone in and not in now after this there is something known as like operator very powerful like operator 
तो लाइक ऑपरेटर इज यूज लाइक अ वाइल्ड कार्ड इज यूज लाइक अ वाइल्ड कार्ड now let's understand what it is so for example if i want to check if i want to check that how many records how many records are there where the first name starts with letter a if this is my request then what will how like operator will help me is i will pass a alphabet a as a wild card with the help of like operator and that wild card will check that how many times there is a name where a is at the starting and it will give you all those records so i will give you an example like let's write select star from customers where first name first name like now i only want the records where the customers first name starts with the letter a so if i want to check anything that starts with the letter a i have to first write here inverted commas because a is a alphabet so you have to write inverted commas first but now if you want to check anything at the starting you have to write that thing at the starting and then you have to write percentile now this percentile is used for creating a wild card of a so now if you want to check anything or any column in which the value starts with a you have to write a first and then you have to write percentile now i will run it so see you are getting all the names here which start with a only the names uh, who start which is like all the names that start with a you will get those names only now just tell me i have used a small a here and i i am getting all the names with capital a so see a also it will understand it both as capital and small a but in different servers or in different tools if you want to check anything that starts with a you have to write something like this like a or first name like capital a percentile now there is a different way also in which you don't have to write two conditions on a same plate you can write both of the things in a single thing also only i will tell you our some like this thing after some time but right now just understand so in sql server it will not matter even if you write capital a or small a but in other servers you have to write like you will you have to write small a as well as capital a both of them so if you want to check anything at the starting then you have to use the format like this starting then you have to put the letter at starting now if you want to check anything that ends with a if i want to check anything that ends with a now what i have to do is i will write where first name like now i have to check a at the ending so i will write percentile and i will write a after the percentile so if you want to check anything at starting then you have to write that thing at starting then percentile if you want to check anything at ending that you have then you have to write percentile and that thing at the end clear is this thing clear to everyone how to check something at starting as well as at ending now this is the basic thing basics of like operator now if you want to check if you want to check anything at the second place or third place or fourth place or any place that you want so if you want to check a single alphabet 
at any place like first place second place third place fourth place like in this example we are searching it at the first place but if you want to check at the second third fourth place then what you have to do you will write select star from customers where first name like and now if you want to check anything at the second place so you have to write an underscore here this underscore will skip your first place and then you have to write the letter that you want to check and then percentile and it will check a at the second place so see in all these names a is at the second place now if you want to check a at the third place you have to put two underscores here now this a will be checked at the third place now if you want to check anything at the second last place tell me that be what, what will be my condition if i want to check anything at the second last place second last place right in the chat box then i have to check it like this percentile percentile a and two underscores this is something that you people are telling me so let's check so see i have written two underscores but i have to check at second last place so let's check see in all these names a is appeared at a second last place so are you clear with the second last third last first second third this thing okay now third step of like clause now there is something known as substring what is a substring and before that what is a string so suppose if my name like suppose my name is durgesh yadav not suppose my name is durgesh yadav and if i want to get u r g u r g from my name then what is this u r g this is my complete string and this is a sub part of my string a small part or a sub part of my string then this thing urg is known as substring this urg is known as a substring so if you want to check if you want to check check any substring in your column then you can check it with like operator how you will do that you just have to write select star from customers where first name like and i want to check ab i want to check a string ab so in any name where a string ab is there i only want those records so i will write percentile sorry i will write inverted commas then i will put two percentiles two percentiles and in between of them i will write ab and i will check it so these are only these are the names where ab substring is present now we'll take one name from it and i will tell you how it is actually checked so let's take gabriel gabriel from here so now tell me the substring the substring that you are searching for how many letters are there in the substring that you are searching for two then there will be a window of two characters there will be a window of two characters and how that window will be checked is 
So your window is of two characters and in your window, there is a B you want to check a B. So it will start from the starting. It will check. It will take two characters from the starting G A is G A matching with a B. No, it will skip. Then it will start from the second second letter and two things it will take a B. Now this a B is matching with a B, which means Gabriel is the thing that has a substring of a B. Now let's take an example of Elizabeth. So it will start from the first two EL, no founding, no output. LI, no founding, no output. IZ, no output. ZA, no output. Then AB, yeah, it, there, it has AB here, which means substring is present here. So this is my output, complete thing. Is it clear how to check a substring with the help of like operator? Now, the fourth thing is, if you want to check, if you want to check anything at starting as well as ending at the same time, at the same time. So if I want to check, if I want to check all the records where A is at the starting, like A is at the starting, and B is at the ending, at the ending. If I want to check something like this, then I will write select a star from my customer's table, from my customer's table where first name like I want to check A at the starting, B at the ending. So I will put a percentile here and I will write A at the starting and B at the ending. So now it will fetch me the records, the names where A is at starting and B is at ending. So there is no name where A is at starting and B is at ending. So I will now check where A that is at the starting and A is at the ending also. So these are the names where A is at the starting as well as A is on ending. Is it clear to all of you? Now the last part of like clause. Like clause. Now, I have a question for all of you. I will give you two to three minutes to solve that question. So this question is for all of you who are here. So I want a query. I want a query to fetch all the records where, where it's, it's starting where first name, where first name is starting and ending with vowels. And vowels are A comma E comma I comma O comma U. So I want all the names where the names are starting with vowels and ending with vowels. So this is my question to all of you. Take two to three minutes and solve this. Just tell me a simple thing. How many or conditions you will need if you want to solve this question? How many or conditions that you will need to solve this question? Akansha is saying five. So Akansha, with the help of five, you mean to say that five or conditions for starting and five or conditions for ending, which means 10 or conditions. Yes or no? Yeah, eight conditions. 
because we have to check starting as well as ending. So now if I tell you that you don't have to use eight conditions, you can do it in single condition. And that is the trick that people ask in interviews. You have to write select a star from customers where, and this question is asked in interviews, where first name like, and you have to put inverted commas, you have to put a square bracket and a square bracket, you will write A E I O U percentile A E I O U. You know that how to check anything at a starting and ending, you know, that thing. But if you want to check five characters at the starting and five characters at the ending, you can do it like this. Let's run it. So you will get all the names that are starting and ending with vowels. Now, how this thing is working, how this thing is working, because this is something new. So I will tell you how this thing is working. What, what is this square bracket? So if you are dropping anything as a square bracket in the like operator, it will appear like a list. It will appear like a list to a like operator. So if it will appear like a list for the like operator, what will happen is if you have written A E I O U in this like operator will check a first. If all the checking of the A is completed, then it will check E. Then it will check I, then it will check O, then it will check U along with this. So it will be checked like, it will be checked like first from this block, from this block, it will take A first and it will check it at the ending. Uh, it will check it with the ending letters A. Then this A is again checked with the ending letter E. Then this A is again checked with the ending letter I. Same like this and A chapter is over. Now it will check E with all these things. So it will work like a list for you. So if you are dropping 20 characters inside this, all those 20 characters will be checked one by one. So this is something known as the list, which we can use in like operator. Is it clear to everyone? So this is something known as like operator. This is the whole chapter of like operator. Okay. How for or so not for or eight or if you will use it with or operator, you will use it like this first name, like a percentile or first name, like sorry. First name, like E percentile, same like this, you will use A E I O U. Then again, you will drop a or condition and you will check A E I U O U for the last thing. So there will be total nine or conditions, nine or condition, but you don't have to do it with or unlike or condition. You know, this thing, why to do it with or operator? So now my question is little different now. And this time I will not solve the question. Only you will tell me the answer. I want all the records which start and end with consonants. So anything except vowel is consonant. So now you have to tell me. How you will solve this? How you will solve this? You just have to modify this condition with not like. Your task is done. So accept all this AIO from you starting and ending. It will only give you consonants thing. Is it clear to everyone?
Okay, nice. And after this like operator, we will try to understand what is aggregate, what are aggregations? Aggregations. So for example, if I'm writing select sum and inside sum, I am passing a column like in this table, there is nothing to pass in a sum column because sum will only take numerical values. So there is something known as sum for adding the values. There is something known as count for counting the values. Then average for averaging the values. Maximum for getting the maximum value. Minimum for getting the minimum value. Now, why there is a parenthesis in all of these things? So these all are known as functions. These all are known as functions. Now, what actually a function is? What actually a function is? These are all called aggregate functions. These are all called aggregate functions. And what a function is? So suppose if I'm writing select sum and I'm giving a column name like total, there is a column name, for example, total amount. And I am giving a total amount column name to my sum. And I am taking it from the table ABC. Now what it will do is it will see the total amount column and all the values in the total order amount column, total amount column will be added up and you will get a result on that. So how this sum thing is working, how actually a function works. So function is a thing, function is a thing. Function is a thing that is, that is already created, already created, or you have to make it. So if a function is already created, then it is known as inbuilt function, inbuilt function. So inbuilt function is a function in which the function is already created. You just have to pass the values and those values are known as parameters. And the second picture is user defined functions, user defined. So these are the functions that we have to make on our own. So we'll not talk about this because we are interested in inbuilt functions right now. So just take an example. For example, if you want to cook, if you want to cook something with the help of microwave, if you want to cook your like vegetables, or if you want to cook anything with the help of microwave, what you are doing is you are passing, you are passing the raw materials. You are passing the raw materials in the microwave microwave and after that it will take 15 or 20 minutes and you are getting the cooked food so now what it is so at the point of time when it is taking 15 to 20 minutes for cooking that food are you able to see the functions are you able to see anything that microwave is doing at that point of time tell me are you knowing that what process is going on inside the microwave? You are just uh, like giving your food and you are getting a baked food, but you don't know what is the actual thing that is going inside microwave by which your food is getting cooked. So that is something known as function of microwave. So you are passing the raw materials. You are passing the ingredients to the microwave and microwave is functioning all those things and giving you a cooked, like giving you a cooked food. So microwave has a inbuilt function inside it, which function only wants parameters and will give you the output. Same like in SQL, there are inbuilt functions. So in inbuilt functions, you give parameters and 
the functioning is done before like someone else has created a function for you you are just using that functionality by passing the parameters so if we'll talk about some function if we'll talk about some function this some function is created by someone else it's inbuilt function it's already there you are just passing the parameter that you want to have a sum of and after that it will directly give you a sum so that is something known as inbuilt functions is everybody clear with that okay so that's all about the class today thanks for joining the class hope you got something from it